Hi, my name is Levin, and I'm making a game using the Unity Game Engine. It's called Couch Combat, and it's a split screen multiplayer FPS. This is the latest devlog, and this month I chose to focus on a very large issue of my game. My game is pretty close to done. Sure, it needs some more content, and I'd like to try to get online multiplayer in it, but the actual game is basically done. But the game has an issue, it's frustrating to play, and this mostly isn't actually caused by the gameplay itself, rather things like the menu just don't work like you would expect. This makes the game as a whole feel buggy, unpolished, and unprofessional, and those are not exactly the three words I want my game described as, so I'm gonna try to fix that. Basically, I want to transform my game's feel. And for a template to try to match, I'm going to try to make my game feel as good as Lethal League Blaze, which is a great game by the way. Starting up a local game of Lethal League is an easy and smooth experience, while Couch Combat just isn't. That unfortunately means that I'll have to work on what are definitely not my favorite parts of game development, which are UI design, bug fixing, and input management. Last devlog, I finished up a bunch of polish and playtested, but playtesting revealed even more things I have to fix, so I guess I'll do that now. First off, I updated the reload sounds for many of the guns. And then I also make it so that the big Burfa gun does not cosplay as a pistol from third person. I also finally fixed the very depressing jump pads. To do this, I made it so that instead of adding a force to the player's rigid body whenever it touches the jump pad, it sets the rigid body's velocity, which actually works. And I also addressed the biggest issue with the game, the lack of couches. And this was actually really difficult, as I had to find a way to organically integrate couches into the gameplay and design of the game, which led me to completely starting from scratch. I added couches to like, three stages. I also updated the weapon icons for the new guns. And by the way, if you are interested at all in the game, then please wishlist it on Steam. It's going to be releasing a free demo in about two weeks on Steam, and wishlisting it is an easy, free way to support the channel. As if you wishlist, Steam will recommend the game to more people, even if you don't actually plan on buying it. Other than that, if you want to, you can support me on Patreon as well. And if you support me on Patreon, then you'll be one of the first people to be able to try out the online multiplayer builds, as that's where I'll upload them first. If anybody has been following this project's development for a decent amount of time, then you can probably recall that the game has had a lot of issues with handling input. I've switched input handlers many times, in fact I've used an old input system, the new input system, and a third party one called in control, but I've had issues with all of them. But the one that seems the best is the new input system, so I'm going to go ahead and try to switch back to the new input system, which will hopefully fix a lot of issues in my game. Currently I'm using in control, and with in control it's very difficult to set up rebindings, and also has some strange issues with recognizing controllers, and sometimes even switches the orders of controllers in the game, which isn't good. So I'm going to properly switch to Unity's new input system, and there are actually a few good tutorials now over the new input system as there weren't really many whenever I was starting out two years ago, so hopefully it'll be easy. It wasn't easy, but I got it done, and hopefully I won't have to do any other boring input based things this month. Oh wait, being able to move through menus with controllers, the thing that every single controller based game ever has. Well, except for my game, so I guess I should get on it. Now I know that Unity has a built in solution for controller input, but it's weird and not working for me, so instead of wrestling with bugs, I'm just going to create my own simple solution. But I did end up doing one really big thing whenever implementing controller input, and that is completely redoing the game options screen. There are a few reasons why I did this. One, I wanted the menu to look better, and having 3D VHS models is a neat aesthetic. And two, the new menu is just a straight line to navigate. And that is much easier for me to code. So yeah, that's the real reason I did it. And the guns also have 3D models as well, though they've been having some bugs lately. Also I added a few new features to the new menu, which is the ability to select or deselect all the stages or guns at once, although it makes sure you always have at least one stage enabled at all times. Also I added a shuffle option to the stages that allows you to shuffle them, which makes playing the game quite a bit more interesting. Setting up the main menu, pause menu, and game options menu to work with controller input took a while, but the real issue ended up being the settings menu. I messed around with it for a very long time and was pretty close to getting everything working. But then I encountered a very strange bug whenever I tried to set up transitioning from the main settings menu to the details. This bug completely froze the game for like 40 seconds every time it happened, and I couldn't figure out what was causing it, so I decided to instead just do what I did to the game options menu and redo the settings menu to make it simpler, and while I'm at it, I might as well make it look and function a bit better. But that I'll have to wait until the next devlog. Although my game may still look very similar to play, if you actually sit down and try to play it now, it feels a thousand times better than before. Here's a comparison of what navigating the menu used to look like and what it looks like now. I still have a ways to go, but the game is still making progress quickly, and I'm excited to move on to actually developing content again instead of just polishing it.
Speaking of that, I am once again making a few major changes in the plan for this game. Let's be honest, I've been working on this game for two years, so I don't want to halfway do it. So yeah, the plan is no longer for the game to be free whenever it releases. As stated, I've spent two years on this, and I won't release it until I'm sure there's 100% worth a $10 price tag. So yeah, that's how much it's going to cost. But to make up for it, the game will be receiving more content, probably about 16 more stages in two areas, and several new guns and throwables as well. But the biggest thing I have planned for the game is online multiplayer. I've already tried doing that once though, so how do I expect to do it this time. Well, to be honest, I had a terrible approach to online multiplayer last time. Instead of properly learning what I was doing, I just rushed headfirst into development and got nowhere. So I'm going to try making a smaller project using online multiplayer and then try to move what I've learned onto couch combat. It might take a little bit longer, but if it actually works, it will definitely be worth it. Adding online multiplayer will probably extend development by at least a month, probably more. But as I said, I don't want to halfway finish this game. So yeah, let's get this local multiplayer game online. Finally, I've been working with a composer a little bit to get some original music made for the game. So far, we don't have any tracks ready, but I'll be sure to show them off whenever they are ready, so subscribe for that. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my one and only extra cool Patreon, Howard House. What a chad. Bye.